Okay guys, so today we're talking about acid-base reactions. And what we're trying to do is we are trying to figure out how do you determine the products in an acid-base reaction. Now really quickly, if you were okay with precipitation reactions, you are going to be fine with acid-base reactions. Because just like acid, or sorry, just like precipitation reactions, acid-base reactions are double replacement reactions. So here's what we're gonna do. I've got my acid, and I know he's an acid because he starts with an H, okay? He's going to run into a base. And I know that this guy is my base because he ends with an OH. Now both of my reactants are going to be aqueous. They're dissolved in water. And this is important for the same reason it was important in the precipitation reaction. These are ionic compounds. And when ionic compounds are dissolved in water, they break apart into ions. So my HCl is going to break up into H and Cl. My NaOH is going to break up into Na and OH. Now, just like with precipitation reactions, I need to check charges. So I look on the periodic table. H as a cation is always a plus one. OH as an anion is always a negative. Oh, sorry. It is a negative one. Okay. Cl as an anion is a negative one. And Na as a cation is a plus one. So just like with precipitation reactions, double displacement, two things trade places. I keep my positive with a negative. Now, in this case, here's what happens. My H and my OH come together. Plus one, minus one. I just stick them together. And I could write it as H-O-H. -H. However, you're never actually going to see this written as H-O-H. -H. This is going to be written as H-2-O. Okay. Na is a plus one. Cl is a minus one. So again, they cancel out. So I can just stick these together, okay? Now, water at room temperature is always going to be a liquid, okay? Not aqueous, can't dissolve in water because he is water. So he's gonna be a liquid. The second is going to be aqueous, okay? These are not precipitation reactions. We are not going to have a solid form. Just like with precipitation reactions though, make sure that at the end you double check. Everybody's still happy. My reaction is balanced, okay? Let's look at one that's a little bit trickier. Let's say I have H2SO4. I know he's an acid because he starts with H. And let's say he reacts with potassium hydroxide. I know he's a base because he ends in OH. Both of my reactants are going to be aqueous because it's an ionic compound, I can break them apart. 
So H2SO4 is going to break into H and SO4. KOH is going to break into K and OH. We keep track of our charges. So H is a plus one. SO4 is a minus two. K is a plus one. And OH is a minus one. Just like before, they switch partners. My H and my OH are going to come together to make water. Plus one, minus two. I need to switch charges when they don't match. So this is gonna be K2, SO4, one. H2O is water. He's going to be a liquid at a room temperature. My second ion, not a precipitation reaction. He's going to be aqueous. Okay. Don't forget when you're done to check and make sure everybody's balanced. With precipitation reactions, H2O is a little bit trickier. So start with things that aren't H's and O's like K, I need two Ks over here. Here's my trick for balancing waters. I have an H with a positive charge reacting with an OH with a negative charge to make HOH or water, H2O. Two H's two OHs are going to make two waters. The coefficient on my H's is always going to be the same as the coefficient on my hydroxides, is always going to be the same as the coefficient on my water. Okay, let's try one last problem. Let's say I've got H3PO4. I know he's an acid because he starts with H. Okay. Let's say that he reacts with barium hydroxide. And I want to figure out what forms. They're both aqueous. So I know that they're going to break apart. H3PO4 will break into H with a plus one charge because it's always H with a plus one charge and PO4. PO4 has a negative three charge. BaOH2 breaks into BA, barium has a plus two charge, hydroxide OH is always a negative one. They switch partners, H and OH come together to make water always, which I know is a liquid plus two, minus three, I need to switch charges. B, A, three, P, O, four, two, and I'm good. I want to balance things that aren't H's and O, H's first. B, A, three, so I need three BAs. PO4, two. So I need two PO4s, okay? Remember our trick with our water. 
I've got six H's reacting with six OH's. The coefficient on H is always equal to the coefficient on OH is always equal to the coefficient on H2O. Okay? I know I went through this pretty fast, but it looks just like precipitation reactions. Now, one quick reminder, okay? Some of the problems on the back are going to be word problems, so you'll need to go from names to formulas, formulas to names. Your acids always have to start with H's, and we've got our rules, okay? If it's just two elements, if it's a binary acid, start with your H, sorry, and I call him hydro. Name your anion, which is chlorine, but I change the ending to IC. So he becomes hydro, chlor, ic, acid. Okay. If we have something with a polyatomic ion, he's an oxy acid. These don't get the prefixes hydro. Okay, hydro is just if I've got two elements. If it's a polyatomic ion, I name the polyatomic ion. So I had sulfate. If your polyatomic ion ends in A-T-E, we change that ending to I-C. If the polyatomic ion ends in I-T-E, we change the ending to O-U-S, okay? So you would expect sulfate to become sulfic acid Sulfur is weird. If you write sulfic, that's okay, but just know what he's actually going to become. He's one of the weird ones. He will become sulfuric. So he does still end in IC. If it was sulfite, he would become sulfurous acid. Okay, O-U-S. Same thing down here with phosphate. Phosphate, A-T-E. We change that ending to I-C. Now, normally we would expect him to be phosphic acid. Just like with sulfate, he becomes phosphoric. Okay. Now remember, if you're going from names to formulas, please, please, please pay attention to charges. These are ionic compounds. Make sure you balance out your charges. Okay. If you struggle, we will talk about this next class. I will see you then.